And I just want to let you know that God blesses you. And I want to just say, you are special in every way. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love that he plays this. That was President Trump speaking for over an hour in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, very important state to him, kind of doing a little bit of a victory lap after Republican Karen Handel won her special election in Georgia yesterday after Trump's election, Republican Party, his party, 5-0. and oh. So the president feeling a little wind at his back. He hit on uh, a lot of the high notes, uh, infrastructure, tax reform, immigration, North Korea, China, also weaving some amusing anecdotes into the stories and um, slamming the mainstream media as usual. Gregory, uh, what struck you from this huge rally out in Cedar Rapids? Uh, the gum chewing was a little <laughs> irritating, but Who I was have to, chewing gum. The, 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 the nice woman behind him was chewing a lot of gum. But I have to say, this is a very, this is a very interesting thing. Everything he talks about, law and order, security, national defense, he's talking not about himself. He's talking about them. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. So this is where you get this incredible distinction and in, in why the Democrats are in trouble. We know what he's about. He is about us. We know what the Democrats are about. They are about him. Mm -hmm. So as he focuses on America, the Republicans focus on America, the Democrats are mistakenly focusing on him, mm -hmm. and they're devoting all their energies. They're pouring millions into a, a seat in Georgia. They are obsessed with Russia because their entire party line, their entire plank is get Trump. And, and meanwhile, he's just saying, this is what I'm going to do for you. This is what I'm going to do for you. When he says, we're driving him crazy, that's what he's alluding to. And then he plays the Rolling Stones at the end, which is <laughs> another nice little touch just to say, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, because the Rolling Stones, I don't believe, enjoy that. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> and you can't always get what you want, Mick. That's... Although he pretty much did. He does. And he <laughs> yeah. still does. Yeah, that, um, that. Greg makes an interesting point, Dana. The, the president's connection with crowds, um, very important, very emotional connection. Interesting that a Manhattan billionaire has such a great connection with you know regular everyday citizens of, of middle america I, I feel like the democrats and the media have a very hard time with that connection because they cannot break that connection and that connection con continues to sustain this president even after all these slings and arrows so it's been confounding for not just for democrats or the media but for the 17 or 16 candidates that he talked about because he did the whole gamut tonight i thought that what <laughs> What is refreshing about it, if you're a viewer or a fan or if you're just interested in politics, is that it's completely unfiltered. Mm -hmm. It is not scripted. This is all off the cuff. And he was, he was able to give his viewpoints on the accomplishments that he thinks he's made so far. Nobody's going to forget what he was talking about. He did something else that I thought was really important tonight, and you haven't seen him do it before, like when the House was trying to pass health care. He laid out the case for why we need health care reform, and he said the Republicans are working on it, we are going to bring it to you, and it doesn't matter how good the bill is, we're not going to get a single Democrat for it. What I think that was saying to Republicans back in Washington is, I've got your back, I'm going to provide some air cover for you because th this fight is going to happen within the next seven days, and that bill will be public tomorrow, it'll be voted on, hopefully, uh, well, the Republicans say they'll hopefully vote on it by Wednesday. And he goes to Iowa and he makes these points in a state that where Medicare and Medicaid mean a lot, and they have a governor who's paying a lot of attention. We're going to spend a lot of time on, on it this hour, but I would say health care in particular, and also he talked about the future for tax reform, and in particular in Iowa talks about the death taxes. So I, I thought for... Republicans tonight, if you were looking for a reason to be supportive of President Trump, this was a good moment for him and for them. It was a good moment, and I think, you know, the president has a tendency to sometimes go off on tangents at these rallies, but he did a little bit, but also seemed very disciplined when he talked about the substance of the policy agenda that he's pushing forward. Kimberly, assess how you believe the president's performance was tonight. I thought he did a fantastic job because you could tell that he was in a very good mood. He's very happy. He is euphoric after that big win because it was kind of like in your face, mainstream media, because they were all saying that Ossoff was going to win. And the sound that you heard of the flushing last night wasn't Greg, but it was the $27 million <laughs> down the drain that the Democrats spent. Yes. Yeah, a lot so of that money. That didn't work out very well for them. Um, so he's able to come off of that high to say, wait a second, this was supposed to be a referendum against me. It, in fact, was not. Uh, she took the lead last night and never looked back. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, is very positive 
of in terms of the timing. It's very <coughs> fortuitous because he was able to give this great speech in Iowa. You could tell that the crowd loved it. He was able to hit the high notes. He was talking about what a great builder he is. He reassured them about the wall. He brought up Otto Warmbier. Yep. All of the things that people want to hear and to say, listen, I know there's a lot going on in the world. Tremendous amount of strife. There's national security issues, etc. I'm going to do this. We're going to get it done. I made a promise to you. I'm not going to let you down. Sometimes people do want to be reassured to at least believe that he is intending to do these things. And so when you look at the juxtaposition of, of this high coming off the big win, um, him coming out in front of a crowd that really enjoys his you know, company, then you have what the Russia thing seems to pale in comparison, at least you know, tonight with this going on. Uh, very effective performance, Juan. I think the Democrats probably fear this style when Trump gets out there in front of a big crowd, as opposed to doing stuff from the podium in D.C.? Well, I think he needs to get out of D.C. It's not the Democrats who fear anything. In fact, I think he complained when Obama would do this. He'd say, why doesn't he go back and actually run the government instead of campaigning all the time? Trump's been on the road all the time. He has reason to celebrate today. That was a big win for him yesterday, because if he hadn't, he would have seen terrific erosion among Republicans, especially in the House, who would fear for themselves in the Trump era. So what you saw in this speech, I think the spine of it was going after the media. I thought that was the whole thing. They won't show the crowd size. Turn the cameras around. They don't want to tell you the sound that this great place. You know, his problem is if Republicans continue, and you see a slight decline now down to about 70 percent in Republican yep. support from what was 80, he's going to have problems. So he yeah. needs to keep the conservative media on his side. Well, That's what this is doesn't about. doesn't have too many problems uh, undefeated in special elections and still going strong. Much more to come from tonight's presidential rally.